Welcome to Working with Fire Profiles in Inner Systems IRS for Health. My name is Kurt Don. I'm the technical writer for the Inner Systems Fire team. And we'll start with the question, why do we need profiles? Well, in most cases, it's not enough to say a healthcare environment supports fire. Rather, it supports a specific variation of fire. In fact, people often say there's an 80-20 principle with fire, where 80% of what your environment uses comes from the base specification, say R4, but that leaves 20% that comes from profiles and other fire artifacts. So if fire resources form the agreement on data models being used to exchange healthcare information, then profiles are the details of that agreement for a specific ecosystem. A little bit more about profiles, they are resource specific. So when you're talking about profiles, you should be talking about the patient profile, the observation profile, the encounter profile. Now, commonly people do refer to the entire implementation as a profile, but technically, this isn't correct. For instance, you'll hear people talk about the US Core profile. Actually, US Core is an implementation guide that contains profiles and other fire artifacts. So basically a profile says what's allowed for this resource, what data fields are allowed for this type of resource. And it does this by extending or constraining the base fire specification for that resource. And how does it do that? It does it with something called a structure definition. So structure definition is a special fire resource called a conformance resource that defines a profile. Basically, conformance resources are metadata that define the building blocks of a fire implementation. And you'll notice there are more parts to a fire environment than just profiles. For instance, there are search parameters and codes, which are in fire are called terminology. So for search parameters in an environment, you have search parameter conformance resources, codes, you have value set and code system conformance resources that are defining those pieces of the ecosystem. A little bit about how uh, fire concepts relate to one another. So you, we've talked about profiles and other conformance resources. Well, a coherent collection of these conformance resources is called a package. So you might hear it called a metadata package because it contains uh, conformance resources, which are metadata. You might hear it called profile packages because the package contains profiles. But According to the specification, you know, these collection of conformance resources for an implementation or a package. Now, the distribution method of these collections are also called packages, NPM-like packages. As you'll see in the demo, there is a fire package registry that you can go and download these packages, collections of conformance resources as NPM packages. I talked a little bit earlier how US Core is not a profile, but rather an implementation guide. Well, what is an implementation guide? Basically, it's an environment that's robust enough to include full documentation that describes the, the conformance resources in the package. So it's a package plus documentation. So if you're talking about US Core or DaVinci, these are implementation guides. You can go to the HL7 website and look at the documentation that explains the profiles, that explains the search parameters, that explains the terminology. So let's talk a little bit about how a fire server built on IRIS for Health supports profiles and other conformance resources in a healthcare ecosystem. Basically, we're talking about validation and search. So for validation, we're asking the question, does this resource conform to a supported profile? Now, according to the fire specification, a server does not do this automatically. So a fire client can store a resource in the fire server uh, asserting that it conforms to a profile, but it's not the fire server's job to test that assertion automatically. Rather, if the client's being a good citizen, it's going to call dollar validate to validate the resource before storing the resource. And right now, currently in IRS for Health, we support validation against the base specification. And coming soon, 
you'll be able to validate against a specific profile. So also when we're talking about a fire server, we're talking about search. So what search parameters are available in an environment? So there are base uh, search parameters available in the specification, but a specific environment might have unique search parameters too. And there's a relationship between the profiles in an environment and the search parameters. For example, if you have a, a patient profile that has an extension that has an extra field in it, if it's important enough to have its own field, probably you're going to want to be able to search for resources based on the values in that field. And so you'd have a search parameter that corresponds to the extension on the profile. Now we'll have a little bit of a demo in Iris or Health 2020.4. Okay, we're going to start our demo in the management portal. Uh, and look at our fire server. So we go to health, fire configuration, server configuration where we work with our fire servers. And you'll see I have one endpoint for my server, my fire R4. If I look at the details of that, see the core package is the base R4 standard. And an additional package is the US core the latest version of US Core. Um, just to show you, if I were to add a new endpoint, selecting R4, you can see that I have US Core as an option to apply to the endpoint by default. This is out of the box. So when you create an endpoint out of the box, you have the option of that endpoint supporting US Core. So let's cancel out of there. Um, now suppose we have this endpoint, it's been running, but someone publishes a new implementation guide that we want this endpoint to support. In this case, it's a, it's a rather new implementation guide, the DaVinci Payer Data Exchange uh, Drug Formulary Implementation Guide, or PDEX Drug Formulary uh, Implementation Guide. And we want our endpoint to support this. Uh, because it's an implementation guide, it has documentation available on the HL7 website. And basically, a drug formulary is a list of drugs a health insurer agrees to pay for. So in this case, the formulary drug profile of the FHIR medication knowledge resource provides plan-specific information about a drug. So we're talking about medication knowledge resources, in particular, medication knowledge resources that can form to the formulary drug profile of the DaVinci implementation guide. So let's go to Postman and we'll post uh, a couple medication knowledge resources into our resource repository. So the first is a vanilla medication knowledge resource. This is from the base specification. We're gonna post that into our resource repository and it was created. Now let's put in a medication knowledge resource that conforms to the profile. So it's medication knowledge, but you'll see here that the profile field has the formulary drug profile, the URL of the formulary drug profile. If we scroll down a little bit more, you can see it has an extension, a plan ID extension, the value of which is 4030 my plan. So let's put that in the resource repository. Now suppose we want to re, uh, retrieve resources from the resource repository based on a search parameter. In this case, the drug plan search parameter with the value 4030 my plan. And if we try that, you'll see that the op operation outcome is parameter not supported unrecognized parameter drug plan. That's because drug plan is not a search parameter in the base specification. This is a, a search parameter unique to the DaVinci implementation guide, which our endpoint doesn't support yet. So that's why it fails. So what we need to do is go grab that implementation guide, apply it to our endpoint so we can use the search parameter. And so how we get we go to the fire package registry. Now this is new within the last three or four months. 
Um, if you're familiar with simplifier.net, where you used to go get conformance resources, uh, they were involved in creating this page. And in this case, we're just going to search for the package we need, which is the DaVinci drug formulary. We'll search. And there's our result. So this is a package, a fire package, containing the implementation guide. Because it's an NPM package, I have a, a command here that I can copy. Go into my prompt. Run the NPM command. And it's going to install the conformance resource JSON files to my local disk. Now, if we wanted to take a look at those, uh, there they are on disk. And in this case, there's a search parameter JSON file. And the resource type is search parameter. That's the conformance resource. If you go down here, the code is drug plan. The code is what you actually put in your URL as your search parameter. And if you look at the expression, the path that it's using, what field the search parameter is searching on, you can see it's the plan ID extension, which we saw on the medication knowledge um, resource that we put into the resource repository. So now that's on local disk, let's go back to the management portal. Let's uh, make this a little bigger. And we go to the package configuration card where we import packages. You can see we already have the R4 specification package and the US core package. But now we want to add the one for the DaVinci implementation guide. So let's go to that directory. We want to upload. You can see the name is the DaVinci. Let's import those. And there it is. Now you can see that the DaVinci drug formulary uh, package has been added. So now that it's been, it's available, we want to add it to the endpoint. So we go back to server configuration. We want to edit the endpoint. So if I go to additional packages, there it is. I can now just add um, the new package to the endpoint and update. And now it's updating. Now in this demo, we're seeing how we add and use a search parameter that we're applying to the endpoint. But coming soon will be validation. And if you just think about it, uh, someone will publish a new implementation guide, it will go to the fire package registry, grab it, apply it to an endpoint, and you can actually be validating resources against a profile within 15 minutes. So that's coming soon. In this demo, we're showing how you do that with a search parameter. Now after this finishes running, we're going to have to switch to terminal to run a second step when you add a search parameter. The reason being it's a second step. If this endpoint's been running for a while, you could have a million resources in the repo and we don't want to kick off a re-indexing of all those resources by default. We want you to be able to choose when you want to do that. So this is just finishing up. There we go. So we'll go into terminal and choose to re-index our endpoint. Because I only have two resources, we're done. So now let's go back to Postman. And remember, when we tried to use this search parameter before, before we got the unrecognized parameter. But now if we try it again, we get one in our bundle. And you can see it's the medication knowledge, the second one we put into uh, the repository, and it indeed has the profile. And um, if you scroll down a little further, it has that 
4030 my plan value in its plan ID extension field. And now remember that we have two medication knowledge resources in the repository. So if I just say get me all of them, we'll see that the bundle has two medication resources. But now suppose we want to use the underscore profile search parameter, which is a standard search parameter in R4. And basically that's saying, get me all the medication knowledge resources that assert that they conform to the drug formulary profile. Now if we were to search that, we just get one rather than two because it's only the ones that conform to the drug formulary profile. Great. Now suppose uh, you don't want to use a published implementation guide, but you're using US Core and your healthcare environment just needs to add one field to the patient resource. Um, so you just want one extension on the patient resource, and then you want to be able to search on values in that field. How would you do that? So basically on disk, you would just create a directory and there you have your conformance resources. You have a structure definition for your patient that contains an extension. You have a search parameter conformance resource that searches on that extension. And then because it's treated like an NPM package, you have a file package.json, which if you open it, uh, all you need is a name, version, and the dependencies. And in this case, it's the R4 core specification and the US core. So just like we did before, it's treated like an NPM package. So if we go back to package configuration and import package, and I go into my custom package directory, and you can see now there's my package. And if I, you can apply that to an existing endpoint like we did with the DaVinci implementation guide. Or if you wanted to create a new one, you know, now that's an option. You could do US core and your custom package and apply that to the endpoint. Great. So just a couple key takeaways uh, for today. One, in 2020.4, the fire server supports search parameters available in published implementation guides and custom packages. And coming soon, the fire server will support the validation of resources against profiles that are contained in those packages. I invite you to attend some of the other fire sessions here at Virtual Summit. I'll also point out that on November 2nd, there is a live experience lab where you can uh, go through an exercise with the fire server, and that's in a couple time slots on the second. And there's uh, the page of the HL7 specification that deals with some of the concepts we've talked about today. Feel free to contact me at any point, but I also wanted to point you to Craig Lee. He's the product specialist for InterSystems Iris or Health and a great resource for all things fire. Thanks for joining me today.